What would you do if you saw a 13-year-old girl walking up and down the street? Would you stop and do something? Or would you pretend you saw nothing at all? I was afraid the moment I picked up that Canon EOS T3 camera in my hand and I met my classmate after school. An Oakland police captain picked us up in downtown Oakland, California, and we headed out to one of the most dangerous streets in America. We were making a film, a film called International Boulevard, a documentary, and what we wanted to do was capture the lives of girls that were being sold for sex on the street. Girls in America. The whole reason I started working on this was not because it was something that was so far away that I couldn't imagine, but because it was so close to home for me. I remember uh, the first time I heard about child sex trafficking, I, um, I was a sophomore in high school and I overheard a couple of friends and they were talking about a girl, one of our classmates that was being pimped out by her boyfriend. He would take her to parties and force her to sleep with his friends for quick cash so he could pay his phone bills. And afterwards, they'd leave. That weekend in particular, she refused and he beat her so badly that we never saw her again. This was my main motivator in everything that I do. And when I heard that this was happening in my own community, I needed to share this message with the world. I remember thinking to myself, pimped out? What does that even mean? You know, I'd hear the word pimped out using a different sort of vernacular, you know, from Bay Area rappers like Too Short and E-40 talking about pimping out or even on um, MTV with uh, Pimp My Ride. But I'd never, ever heard it used on actual girls in America. So I was on a mission. I was on a mission to change the way people saw child sex trafficking in America. I needed people to understand that this was real. It was a tangible thing. And so what I did is I made film. I went to art school and so I picked up that camera and I realized that the only thing separating me from the horrendous condition of children on the street was that lens. I realized that art was extremely powerful. You know, I grew up in Oakland and us people from the Bay Area were super passionate about our town. Oakland was the center of art you know, it's known for its art and culture and diversity. It is actually one of the most diverse cities in the country. But as any city, just like New York, with diversity comes this harsh underbelly of violence. And although, you know, I love my city because it opened me up to this world of artists and activists, I knew that art was going to be the way for me to connect to the world and share this idea that I had, this idea that I could change child sex trafficking by just bringing awareness to it. After my film was made, I realized that 100,000 children are trafficked in the United States, and hundreds of thousands more were at risk of having their bodies sold. I was astounded when I discovered that 12 was the average age of entry into child sex trafficking. Girls were being sold 10 to 15 times a day, seven days a week. And let me remind you, these are not girls in India and in Thailand, Sri Lanka, Cambodia. These are girls in the United States of America in our own backyards, in our communities. This is right in front of us. But I knew that we needed some sort of systemic change too, and, and film was a great starting point for all of this. So what I did is I decided 
to start an awareness and prevention campaign. And how I did that was I asked to join the Oakland Youth Commission, and I was actually elected as chair so I could push this agenda of child sex trafficking forward. I started a major billboard campaign in the city. We had Clear Channel donating dozens and dozens of billboards, spreading messages of awareness. One of the billboards we have right here is, being a prostituted teen isn't a choice, it's slavery. And now I realize that there is no such thing as a prostituted child. Another billboard read, teens sold for sex aren't prostitutes, they're rape victims. And what this did is, it brought conscience to this matter. People were starting to understand that they're not streetwalkers. These girls are not prostitutes. These children are not, they're not prostitutes. You see, child sex trafficking is not a victimless crime. There is a consequence to this. So I came up with a couple ideas, a couple of ways that we can go about tackling such a huge issue in this country. I realized that, one, we need to love our children. For the most part, children that are being sold for sex or at risk have never experienced love before. They've gone through systems like the foster care system where basically, you know, when a man or a pimp comes along and says that you know, she's the most beautiful thing that he's ever seen and that he wants her to be his girlfriend. She's flattered and she becomes an immediate victim. We need to love our children. We need them to understand that we love them and not just your own children, but all children in this country. The men that go around and say these sweet things, they're what we call Romeo pimps. They're good looking, they're young, and they are one of the problems. Number two, we need to encourage education. We need to put more funding in schools, especially low income schools and inner city schools because if these kids don't have seats to sit in or books to read, they don't wanna be there. And if they're not in school, they're on the street. And if they're on the street, they're an immediate target to what we call gorilla pimps. Gorilla pimps use fear and aggression to literally kidnap our children. And the third and most important thing that I feel we need to do is empower young women and children. Empowering young children is extremely important. Empowering young women of color is extremely important. It's something that I've had to, to grow up and understand for myself as a woman of color. We need to show women of color and empower them and allow them to know that they don't have to have their bodies as sexual objects for the exploitation of men. It's taken me a long time to kind of put this together and really understand it for myself. We as Americans, we think that we're the saviors of other nations. But sometimes, the greatest impact we can have is in our own communities. Sometimes we just need to dig our feet into the soul of the earth and look around and see what do we have to do in our own communities because we can make the greatest impact right here, right here at home. We've got a lot to work on ourselves. And of course, it's important for us to travel the world and experience other lives and other cultures but it can be overwhelming as activists. Sometimes I become overwhelmed myself and I think, you know, maybe I just need to end child sex trafficking across the world. But then I know and I remember the great words of Maya Angelou who said, if you don't like a thing, change it. And if you can't change it, change the way you think about it. And I truly believe that if we change the way we think about child sex trafficking in America and we drop and break that stigma, we can end child sex trafficking and we will be able to change the world. Thank you so much.